my foreign art family and friends. Take me out to the ball game. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. We're gonna root, root, root for the home team. Oh, baseball. Baseball and Passover. And that's the name of my story today. Matzo ball, a Passover story. In our story, we're going to meet Elijah the prophet. He's part of a Passover Seder. I like to think of him as someone who comes to my home bringing hope, bringing happiness. And that's who Aaron is thinking about and who Aaron is hoping to meet one day. Maybe this will be the time. Because see, for Aaron, it's not always easy being Jewish. Sometimes believing in miracles makes it easier. That's what happened to him last year at Camden Yards. Larry's dad had tickets to an early season game. And Larry invited Dan, Kate, and me to go along. You see, we're on the neighborhood softball team together, and he knew we really enjoyed watching the O's. I was telling my mom how excited I was when her voice shattered my visions of home runs flying way out of Utah Street. Ah, look at Aaron's room. You think there are sports in that room? It shows you all the things that he loves and how are his favorites. Here's his Oreo batter. Here's his hat. And here was mine, too. Don't forget, Aaron. The game is during Passover, my mother said. No pretzels, no Cracker Jacks, no ice cream. You're going to need to bring your own food. Oh, Mom, I groaned. How can you enjoy a baseball game without junk and snack food? The other kids aren't Jewish, and they're going to be able to eat anything they like. It's just not fair. Sorry, Aaron, she answered. Those are the guidelines for Passover. No eating the hummus food. I was really upset. It's not easy being Jewish. Every year I have to explain why there's a sukkah in my backyard and why I miss some things that my other friends get to do. But my friends tell me I'm lucky because I get extra days off from school. Rosh Hashanah, Shavuot. And they also say, you know how lucky you are? Hanukkah asks for eight days, but I'm not so sure. Sometimes I just want to be like everyone else. Mom wasn't finished telling me things. She told me how lucky I was that I was able to celebrate Passover and reminded me that in many places, people aren't free. And that Jewish people worked really hard in Egypt. And all I was upset about was not eating snack food at a game. You know what I thought? I said, you know what? Maybe when the rabbis wrote down all those rules, they weren't thinking about baseball. I'm sure they would have made an exception. The day of the game was perfect, sunny and cool. Mom packed me a Passover lunch. I got matzah, tuna fish, chocolate chip macaroons, and fruit slices. When I arrived at Larry's house, he wanted to know, hey, what's in your lunch bag? Oh, I grumbled, it's Passover, so I can't eat the stuff at the ballpark. Oh, too bad, he said. But then suddenly his eyes brightened up and he said, oh, do you have those great tasting Passover cookies? You mean the macaroons, I answered. I love them, Larry drooled. Okay, okay, Larry, I said. You can have some of them when we get to the ballpark. And I assured him of that as I followed him out to the car. We drove to Camden Yards. 
Larry's father even had a special parking permit so he could get into one of the lots near the stadium. We joined the people and were already inside. They were at the concession stand, but instead we bought scorecards, found our seats, and settled in for the game. That's what I would do at Passover, my friends. Part of my Seder is we'd hide the afikoman. And if my dad couldn't find it, he'd say, well, all right, what do you want? And I'd look at him and I'd go, well, I know you want dessert, dad, but what I want is a ticket to a baseball game. I usually went to Yankee Stadium, but a baseball game ticket, that was the best treat. Three pitches into the first inning, Larry reminded me about my macaroons. Oh, you have macaroons, sighed Kate. I love them too. And she began th going through my lunch bag and she found the fruit slices. Mmm, these look really good. My lunch was fast disappearing. I wasn't so hot on the macaroons though, or the fruit slices either. Hmm, he seemed to be enjoying his lunch. Don't know what Aaron was complaining about. We got to the road of the baseball game. The game was a triumph. But for me, I was having a culinary disaster. The Orioles, yahoo! They scored run after run. I was just amazing. And boy, was I happy. As it turned out, Larry's dad had a thing for my matzah. So I gave him some. Thanks to Dan now, the tuna fish was gone. My friends were happily eating my lunch, as well as every other food they hound in the ballpark. By the fifth inning, I was so hungry. I began to think about this. Maybe I could have a kosher Passover stand at the baseball stadium. Wow, that would be fabulous. At the top of the eighth, there had been a pitching change. My friends decided to head out to the concession stand for one last time. I stayed behind, feeling so sorry for myself. Look at all the action going on here at the game. Some people eating, some people watching the game. Wow, so much excitement at a baseball game. Suddenly, I felt somebody tapping me on the shoulder. Hmm. There's this old man. Hi, he said. I noticed you brought your own lunch bag. It reminds me when my mother also packed a lunch and we'd go out to Ebbets Field. You were at Ebbets Field? My mouth dropped. But no, we're really at Camden Yards. When was there an Ebbets Field? Oh, said the old man. That was the good old days. Everyone there would be eating matzah, macaroons, and fruit slices. It was the best of times. Suddenly, I saw myself sitting there at Ebbets Field. All the other Jewish friends eating their Passover lunches man even went ahead and said to me, you know what? Even today, if it's Passover, I too bring my own lunch. Thanks, I said. And now I turned back to watch the game. I ignored the singing song of the peanut vendor and I kept my eyes peeled on the field. The pitcher wasn't helping his team out much because the Orioles Wow, they had a man at the corners. That meant there was a man on first and a man on third. Hmm, and now Cal Ripken, he came up to bat. He fouled the first ball, strike one. The next ball whizzed right by him, strike two. And the old man said to me, he whispered a prayer. Just one home run, Cal. Please.
is just one. Dianu! That won't be enough. And I heard it. The crack of the bat. I saw the ball heading in my direction. But it was too late to grab my glove. The matzah was all I had. It would have to be enough. Dianu! Oh, I got it! I held it up in the air, and I heard the old man yell, It's yours, Aaron! It's yours! But it shattered my matzah. But that's okay. I clutched it. And when I turned to thank the old man, he was gone. Where had he gone? I know he had just been there. And I had the matzah crumbs all over me to prove it. Woo! Way to go, Aaron! Great catch! When my friends returned, they nearly fainted when I showed them the ball. Congratulations, Dad said. Aren't you lucky you weren't standing at that concession stand with us? Now, if someone tells me there's no such thing as a miracle, I just smile. I show them my matzo ball, and I wonder. Though sometimes when I look at it, whatever did happen to my friend back at the baseball stadium? And come to think of it, how did he know my name? Well, that's my telling of the Passover story. So thank you very much for joining me coming into my home where you can see Baltimore and the Orioles are here today. Happy Passover, Barnard family.